Welcome to the next installment in my video lecture series for managerial economics. And as it says here, we're looking at chapter 15, the Q&As. And this particular video, we're only going to take a look at Q&A 15.4. I'm going to read this directly out of your textbook. It was a little bit long to include as part of this presentation. I hope you don't mind. Gary's demand for doctor's visits depends on his health. Half the time his health is good and his demand is D1 in the figure. When his health is poor, his demand is D2. Gary is risk averse. Without medical insurance, he pays $50 a visit. With full, with full insurance, he pays a fixed fee at the beginning of the year and the insurance company pays the full cost of any visit. Alternatively, with a contingent contract, Gary pays a smaller premium at the beginning of the year and the insurance company covers only 20 per visit with Gary paying the remaining $30. How likely is a moral hazard problem to occur with each of these contracts? What is Gary's risk, the variance of his medical cost with no insurance and with each of the two types of insurance? Compare the contracts in terms of trade-offs between risk and moral hazard. So it'd be useful to review uh, the figure that appears in your textbook. So we have two different demand curves, D1, the light blue one, that represents Gary's demand for doctor's visits when he's in good health. And D2 represents his demand for doctor's visits when he's in poor health. And we have two, three different schemes. He can have no insurance, the partial insurance, and full insurance. So let's take a look at, in particular, let's take a look at points A, B, and C and give a little bit of an explanation for this. So if we look, when he has no insurance and his health is good, Gary will visit the doctor once. If he is in good health and has partial insurance, he is going to visit the doctor three times. So this is a moral hazard issue. The presence of insurance has actually increased Gary's utilization. When he had no insurance, he went to the doctors once, but when he had partial insurance, his utilization went to three. And further, if we go from partial insurance to full insurance, we see that Gary's utilization goes to six. So we can see here that not only does the presence of insurance increase Gary's utilization, but the level of insurance. Full insurance causes his utilization to increase fivefold under the uh, scenario where he has no insurance. And you can see that the same thing holds under when, uh, under his demand for poor health, if we look at points A2, B2, and C2, that when he is in poor health and he has no insurance, he visits the doctor five times. But when he's in poor health with partial insurance, he visits the doctor seven times. And when he's in poor, poor health and has full insurance, he goes to the doctors 10 times a year. So again, we see that the presence of insurance is increasing his utilization, but also the degree of insurance, with full insurance having the greatest impact, again, doubling his utilization of services. So realize that that's what we're talking about, that the presence and the degree of insurance impacts the utilization a person has. So that's the moral hazard issue that we're talking about. And this table just summarizes the, the visits that we talked about. All right, so Gary, when he has no insurance, goes to the doctors once in good health and five times with bad health. If Gary has partial insurance and good health, he goes to the doctors three times, but he goes to the doctors seven times when he has bad health. And when he is fully insured and has good health, Gary will go to the doctors six times a year. And when he has bad health, he will go 10 times a year. So what we want to take a look at is the variance that of Gary's healthcare utilization under the different schemes. So the first one we're going to take a look at is with no insurance. So we know that the different states of nature were good health and bad health and 50% for each one. And we know that if he if Gary's on, in good health, he will go to the doctors once. And if he's in bad health, he will go to the doctors five times. So his expected visits for the year is going to be equal to three, taking a look at the two different states of nature that are possible, good health and bad health. We know from the text that he is paying $50 per visit. So if we know the expected visits are three and that those visits cost $50 a piece, that the cost of his expected visits is equal to $150. This is the formula that we're going to use to calculate the, vari uh, the variance 
uh, for his utilization and the variance of his cost. So the probabilities are just the probabilities of each state of nature. This is going to be 50% and this is going to be 50%. This is, this is in here we're taking a look at is good health. So the value under good health is going to be when, for example, it, Gary has good health, he goes to the doctors once, that visit costs $50, so this will be equal to 50. The expected value we've already calculated, and then we're going to calculate the actual value of his visits or the actual costs under good health. Under good health, he's going to go five times, those visits cost $50 a piece, so that's going to be equal to 250 and the expected value again is going to be equal to 150 So if we start plugging that information in, we get that 50% multiplied by 100 squared plus 50% of negative 100 squared. It's 50% of 10,000 plus 50% of 10,000, 5,000 plus 5,000. The variance is equal to $10,000. So the vari variance in his utilization, i.e. the risk of his utilization, is equal to $10,000 with no insurance. Let's take a look under partial insurance. With partial insurance, we remember under a good state of health, Gary is going to go three times. And under, a, uh, under poor health, he will go to the doctor seven times. So that gives us a number of visits, a number of expected visits, of five per year. And remember, under this partial insurance scheme, the insurance company is going to pay $20 per doctor visit. Therefore, Gary's only responsible for 30. So if the expected visits is five and he's paying 50, the expected cost of those visits is going to be $150. Again, we use the same formula that we used previously. All right. So we plug that information in, and what do we know? Under good health, Gary's going to go three times a year at $30 a visit, so we're going to have $90. We have the expected value, which we already calculated. And under good health, Gary's going to, uh, under poor health, Gary's going to go seven times. They cost $30 a piece, so the cost in that state of nature is going to be $210, and the expected value, again, we already calculated at $150. So if we work that through, we get 50% of 60 squared plus 50% of negative 60 squared. So it's 50% of 3,600 plus 50% of 3,600. The variance is equal to 1,800 plus 1,800. So the variance under partial insurance is equal to $3,600. Now what we want to know is what's the variance under the full insurance scheme. And it is equal to zero. Why is it equal to zero? Because once Gary makes his premium payment at the beginning of the year, 100% of his costs of going to the doctor's office are paid. Therefore, his expense is going to be equal to that premium at the beginning of the year, regardless of what his health care utilization is. So there is no variation in his health care costs. So let's compare them just to take a look and see and associate the risk with that. So if Gary has no insurance, if he has, he's not insured, he's bearing 100% of the risk. The thing is, when he bears 100% of the risk, there's no issue but with moral hazard. All right? It's not being impacted by the presence or the degree of insurance because he has no insurance. Let's see what happens when he goes from the state of having no insurance but buying partial insurance, where he pays a smaller premium at the beginning of the year. Uh, but what happens is that the insurance company pays $20 for every doctor's visit. We calculated Gary's variance at $3,600. So you can see that Gary managed to transfer a portion of the risk over to the insurance company because the variance that he experiences is much lower. The issue is what occurs when he also engages this insurance, his utilization goes up. He has higher utilization because of the presence of insurance. Remember that when Gary was in good health and with no insurance, he went to the doctors once, but when he had partial insurance, his utilization went to three. So we had a threefold increase in utilization because of the presence of insurance. If we take a look at the same situation when he is in poor health, when he is in poor health and he has no insurance, he goes to the doctors five times, but
but when he's partially insured, he goes to the doctor seven times. So this moral hazard issue starts getting introduced. The inf increase in utilization or the intensity of utilization by an insured individual increases. That's the moral hazard issue that we're talking about. And finally, let's take a look at the variance when he is fully insured. It is zero. So when he is fully insured, 100% of the risk gets transferred to the insurance company. But the trade-off is there's also a much larger moral hazard issue. There's a much more dramatic impact on utilization intensity because of the presence of full insurance. So let's take a look at that particular um, scenario. So, for example, let's compare no insurance to full insurance. Or let's go through all of them, compare no insurance, partial insurance, and full insurance. So when Gary is in good health, he goes to the doctors once a year, and he is not insured. If he's partially insured and in good health, he goes to the doctors three times. And when he's in good health and fully insured, he goes to the doctors six times a year. So you can see that there's a dramatic increase in his utilization because one, if we go from no insurance to partial insurance, we see a tripling of his utilization. And then when he goes from partial insurance to full insurance, we see a doubling of his utilization. So adding insurance and the degree of insurance has an impact on his utilization. We can see the same exact thing if you take a look at his demand curve when he's in poor health. When he's in poor health, uh, he will go to the doctors five times a year with no insurance, seven times a year with partial insurance, and ten times a year with full insurance. So you can see that as the risk gets transferred to the insurance company, and the greater the amount of risk that gets transferred to the insurance company, the greater issue moral hazard becomes. So make sure that you're aware of that.